Hey guys, welcome to the video. So I'm going to take you through all aspects of using the Plustech Photo Scanner ePhoto Z300. In this one, there's timestamps in the video description. They should also show in the navigation bar of the video. Uh, we're going to cover an unboxing, a device overview. I'm going to show you the scanner in action using the software alongside that. Um, and as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to add your photos into a Google Photos album. So stick around to the end of the video for that. Um, if you like the video, if you find it useful, as always, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're new here and you find it a beneficial video, again, please do consider subscribing for more similar content. Um, if you like this video and you like the scanner and you're thinking of going ahead to buy it, I've put my Amazon affiliate link in the video description. If you use that link, you don't pay anything extra, but it does mean Amazon will give me a small percent back. So it's really appreciated, especially if this has been of use to you. So that's the intro done. Let's get into the video. Okay guys, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the Plustec ePhoto software. So this is the software, it comes bundled on a CD with the actual scanner, however I'll put a link to the download of it in the file description for this video because I think that's just easier for most people. Um, it's relatively easy to install, um, so once you're up and running this is how it's going to look and it's also pretty easy to use. Um, I think they've set it that way, so it's a fairly efficient process. A few things to be aware of. So up in the top left here, you can see the different file types you can set. So, you know, JPEG is going to be right for most people for just scanning in their photos. Uh, up in the top right, the cog here. So a few options here to be aware of. Um, again, just showing you with the defaults. Um, so color settings, um, resolution, maybe the interesting one. So the default is 300. Uh, you can pick 600 DPI, so dots per inch for the quality there. I think again, for most people for the speed and quality, 300 is probably the sweet spot. Um, but you'll find all sorts of articles online about 600 dots per inch versus 300. And depending on what you're planning to do, 
I think if you're just scanning um, six by four photos to view digitally um, and perhaps share, you know, 300 is going to be right. You'll see the difference in the speed the scanner works at as well between 600 and 300 in this video. Um, and I think certainly if you're doing a lot of photos, which I expect you are if you've invested in the hardware and taken an interest in a video like this, um, I think 300 is going to be the, the setting to use there. Um, OCR, so that's um, optical character recognition if you're scanning print, so not really applicable um, for you know your general family photos. Um, and the scan as, you know, you can again specify that it's an image versus a document or just let it be a bit clever on its own on the auto setting. Um, the auto crop and auto diskew, yeah, good to have that on and that's on by default. Um, and apply quick fix, I normally turn that on as well just to let it do anything the software thinks it can do on its own to improve or correct a photo. Um, so the only other thing I'd say maybe worth changing in here is if you're scanning photos of a particular occasion or events, um, I'm going to show you with a few photos from a trip to Italy. I'm just going to prefix this um, default file name standard, which is a date and timestamp, and then a, it appends a count of the photo number um, to the end. So I'm just going to call it Italy underscore at the beginning there. I'm going to say OK to these settings. OK, and, you know, you've seen really you wouldn't have to change anything there, but you can. Um, so you're kind of ready straight away, really, to start your scanning. So I'm just going to start dropping some of the photos through the scanner in real time and you'll see them pop up on the screen. There's the first one, second. Third one going through, and I'm just going to do a final fourth one for this demo. Okay, so that's scanning at 300 um, dots per inch. That's how quick it is to take uh, just some four by six photos through. Um, they all look like they've come out uh, correct to me, but you have got the option if you'd like to, to um, sort of further edit your pictures. Um, so the software contains some basic editing functionality so if you just double click onto a picture um, it'll bring it up in the editing view and you can see here on the right hand side you've got various options to do a bit of editing within the software um, and correct some uh, exposure white balance that kind of thing if you want to play around um, i don't normally personally use this and I dare say you may have some preferred photo editing software that you'd rather use outside of this but you know it's nice to have the option here just click back from any photo once you're done there um, if for any reason you didn't put the photo in the correct way round again if you just select the particular one you want and you've got the quick options here just to rotate up in the top bar um, you can also delete a photo if it's not come out correctly or you didn't want to include it. Um, so we've got our, you know, our photos in here. We're happy with how they're set up. So the next stage will be to save them somehow. Um, you have got an option here with this icon with the arrow uh, for file output to actually output directly to email print or various online services that you can see here. Um, I don't normally uh, use this part of the menu. I'll normally just use the save to get them into um, JPEG files in Windows and then I'll choose what I do with them after, such as, you know, drag and drop them into Google Photos. Um, but just so you can see for the purpose of this overview, there is some integration there with some of the big services. So you could use that, but as I say, the easiest way and what I like to do is just hit the save icon when I've got my photos ready. So we're just saving these four um, in this example. You could have scanned in up to 50 images. Um, it does have a limit at 50 where it will just prompt you and say, you know, please save at this point. Um, not a bad idea. It's probably safe just to get 50 saved and then start on the, the next batch. So I'll go ahead and hit save now with the four selected. 
Um, I've got a folder set up here of called um, Italy within an albums folder under the default plus tech photo um, directory that it sets up. And all you do is say select folder. It'll save them here and then it should open up the uh, the folder for you I'll just open on my other screen so I'll just drag it over and you can see there the four photos are just saved as JPEGs as expected and you can see it's just appended the uh, the number count four digit number count at the end of each photo um, 0001 through to four um, that's what it adds on to that default name that we set um, and then yeah you can just open them up they're just a standard image file now so that's just a quick overview of how you scan uh, into the Plustec ePhoto software. Okay guys, so as mentioned, my preferred photo service online is Google Photos. So I'm just gonna show you how to uh, get the photos we've just scanned into an album in Google Photos. So first thing you're gonna do is head over to photos.google.com in your browser, um, sign in with your Google account if you have one. If not, you need to sign up. Um, and then over on the left-hand side here, click on albums. And then if you move over to the top, right hand you can click on create album um, and then the first thing we're going to do is give that album a meaningful name so I'm just going to call this one um, Italy trip um, hit enter there we go and then we just need to get the photos in there um, you can click on the add photos button and then browse for them um, or you can just bring that folder up that you're in with your photos you just scanned I'm just going to select them all by using uh, control A um, and then I'm going to hold down on the first one here and drag the four over and it's showing me that count of four. It's turned the screen blue behind just while I'm still holding on the left hand mouse button just to show you guys and then I'm going to drop them and you're going to see in the bottom left hand corner it's going to start uploading. Okay so let's just let it upload those photos uh, so saying it's on four or four already four items uploaded confirmed with this sort of status update in the bottom left and here they are okay great so one thing i have noticed with the plus tech scanner is sometimes when i then add the photos into google photos they're in the wrong order um, i think that might be down to the timestamp, um, just where it's saving the photos at the same time if you notice anything like that you can come to this menu in the top right corner click on it click on edit album and then you can drag and reorder images um, if you need to i'm just going to put that one back uh, or move that one through to put it back um, and then once you're done top left corner just click on the tick for edit album um, once you're happy with the order uh, two changes that i'm going to show you one to set the location and two to set the date and time stamp Obviously, when you're taking digital photos, your phone or your camera does this all for you now. Um, but we're just going to try and give it some information to make more sense of them. Um, because at the moment, you can see it thinks these photos were taken on the day that I scanned them, um, which clearly they, they weren't. So I'm going to left click on the first photo in this top left area with the tick. I'm going to hold down shift and then click on the final one. So they're all selected. Get the message up in the top left that i've selected all four i'm going to click on the top right hand menu for the options and let's do the location first so i'm going to go to edit location and for me these were taken in rome i'm just going to start typing in rome italy great we've got a match um, i'm just going to click on that um, you can see in the bottom left it's just confirming it's updated location of all four that's perfect um, and then I'm going to do a similar thing for updating the date and timestamp. So I'm going to hold down shift, click on the first one, click on the final one, select all four, go back to that same menu in the top right and then edit date and time. OK, you get two options to shift dates and times or set one date and time. Um, I tend to go for the shift. Um, either will really work if you're you're not um, overly concerned about being more accurate than the the year the month and the day um, and that's where i'm really happy enough setting them to so i'm just going to type in the year 2000 i 
believe this was probably February. Um, let's just say it was the first, and I'm just going to leave that timestamp as it was. Um, what I can do is also change the time zone here. Um, so let's go ahead and put it to Central European time. Um, and then I can hit preview. It's going to show me the changes. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to hit save. OK. And then again, in the bottom left with these notifications, it's just confirming the date's been updated for all four. And you can see the album now says it's from the 1st of Feb 2000. Um, and if you click into a particular photo and you click on the information, the info up in the top right, um, you should see that, yeah, it's going to say it was taken in Rome and it was the 1st of Feb 2000. And I can see the name that Plustech gave it, the file name when we scanned it. So that all looks good to me. So I'm going to click across. I'm going to click back to go back into the album. So there you have it. Your album set up, your photos are in there. Uh, if you want to share this with someone else with a Google Photos account, just click on the link in the top right to share. Um, you can even share to people that don't have Google Photos and just send a link as well. But that link would be viewable by anyone else they decided to share it with. So there we go. Um, I hope this video has been really useful, guys. If it has been, please do um, give a thumbs up so YouTube knows that it's a good video. Please do um, consider subscribing to the channel if you want more like this. And if you've got any questions, any comments, do drop them down below. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.